What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the half ass Garage. Tonight was going to be a live stream, but I forgot all my camera stuff up at the house. It's about midnight, it's freezing, and I don't want to go get it. So I'm going to film it all just on my camera, on my phone's camera here, and then I'll just upload it whenever I get up to the house. So you're just going to get it just right from the camera. So there's two things. I promise you that there was an awesome piece of equipment that I was getting for the shop. And the second thing, which I've had, but haven't had working, which was going to make tonight like an actual possibility, was wireless internet for the shop. So um, when I put all of the power out here, when I ran all the line and everything, I ran two lengths of, uh, of Cat5 out with it. But during the run or something, they got broke or pulled or... Who knows, maybe the line was def defective to begin with. Who knows, but they don't work. So ended up with the wi wireless bridges from Ubiquity. It's about 350 feet each way, you know, from the house out here. So um, I needed something. But now that those things are out here, it should open up a lot of opportunities and possibilities for things to happen in the shop now that I actually have some connectivity. So... Uh, that little ledge right there, that little shelf, if I sat my phone on that shelf, that was the only place that I would have any signal or service in this whole place. So I would either have to stand outside that door in the rain or whatever, or have my phone right there, and that would be all the service and signal I would get. Now, I can do whatever I want. So, sweet. So anyhow, what was that cool thing? That was That was one of the things. What's the other cool thing that I wanted to show you? Well, check it out. That is the new shop mill. I have wanted a mill for basically my entire adult life. So, but they're they're not cheap and they're not easy to find in decent shape for a reasonable price. So, uh, you know, I finally ran across this one. So one of my buddies found it, told me about it, and uh, it was a friend of his that had it, and I got a super unbelievably sweet deal on it and I couldn't pass it up so this is the mill it's a Jin Shin uh, Bridgeport kind of clone from the 90s I think it's a 94 it's covered in junk right now because I haven't I've been just kind of moving stuff like usual but uh yeah anyway much like the Millennium Falcon it uh, doesn't look like much but it's got it where it counts so one place that it counts is this VFD. So this variable frequency drive is a speed control for the mill. So normally you would have to adjust the speed of this spindle here. So think of it as like a hardcore drill press. Um, uh, you just adjust the speed with these pulleys and belts, but now you just dial in, you know, whatever speed you want right there. Good to go. Also, it comes equipped with a XY DRO. So a digital readout will you know, tell me how far my table moves this way and that way. So it moves back and forth and side to side. Also, it has a, um, a uh, oh my gosh, power feed. So power feed moves the table, flip it over that way, the table slides that way, flip it back the other way, it goes back the other way. It's got a little speed control there so you can feed your work in. And uh, I've just been collecting parts. So I uh, haven't had a ton of time to work on it, but I've just been collecting parts. A little edge finder, Mitotoyo, which I'm kind of doubtful it's really a Mitotoyo. But that, um, some one, two, three blocks, uh, just random stuff that I've needed to collect. I got these massive, some massive tooling from... Uh, from the guy that he gave it to me with the mill and this a two inch end mill and when i say it's razor sharp you could literally shave with this and probably cut your throat and kill yourself with it so i actually need two hands to put it away because it is it's unreal sharp how sharp it is no no just collecting little stuff you know it doesn't really kind of go to it but <clears throat> you know just odds and ends things i got these kennedy boxes here with uh with the mill sort of they were really cheap so 
you know, I bought the rest of these tools, the tooling for it. And, uh, you know, these are the big, huge holders for the giant end mills and stuff. Got some of those. Pretty neat. Um, yeah, so more ER32 collets. I got one set up there. Uh, you know, the Harbor Freight Tap and Die set. And another set of ER32 collets down there. And my lathe chucks. Managed to clean up my little lathe. It's a old Atlas lathe that I got. So I don't really think it's been in too many videos. I haven't done anything really with it. But I finally cleaned it up so it didn't look like a mess. And uh, yeah, I gotta hopefully replace this pathetic little tool post that I've got. It was one of those eBay purchases with uh, creative, you know, photography that, uh, <laughs> you know, kind of sure looked bigger in the pictures type of deal. So that was, that was really it. Um, I got it. I ordered it on, on eBay and it was, I don't know, it looked a whole lot bigger than it really was. But if I can buy a, or if I feel like buying a dovetail cutter for the mill we might just build our own or i'll spend the couple hundred and get a real one that's not aluminum you know sturdier that kind of thing but yeah anyway there's my old atlas 10 inch lathe i believe it's from the kind of early 50s because it doesn't have the gear selection there it's got an actual gear train in it so if you want to cut threads, which this is the little thread cutting thing there, you would look at this chart and it gives you kind of a, I don't know, what it, like you would select what pitch it is from that entire list there and you would arrange the, the gears and stuff according to those diagrams. So you would actually take take the the gears off and rearrange them in different configurations. And then that would allow you to um, change the feed rate of this. So you can cut threads or, you know, take larger bites or smoother surface finishes or whatever. And uh, really, this is kind of intimidating to me. And uh, why would it be intimidating? Well, because while I have wanted one of these mills, my entire life, really, my adult life, I don't know how to use it, really. I, I know how to use it for the most part, and I've used mills before, but I've never had one. And I've, uh, you know, I'm always worried if I go to somebody's place and they say, hey, use my stuff. I'm always afraid that I'll make some bonehead mistake, you know, break their tooling, damage the machine, put cut a groove in something, drill a hole in something, you know, whatever. Just make a, you know, bonehead mistake. So I, I just finally I bought my own to teach myself how to do it. So um, really, with most stuff here, whether it's cars or welding, machining, you know, using the lathe, there's still machining. All of this stuff I've just taught myself over the years. So no one, I didn't take machining classes. I didn't take welding classes. <laughs> you can probably tell I didn't take any welding classes, but. They come out all right most of the time. And car stuff, it's just one of those kind of pick it up as you go type of hobby things. And that's, that's what it's all about here. And uh, that's it. So I want to teach myself how to do the machining stuff. And uh, I think it'll be a huge help. There's been so many times that I've needed a mill. Uh, I'm, I'm making kind of an assumption that most people watching uh, would will already know what this like bridge port or mill is for but if you don't leave a message in the comment there's billions of them on youtube they've been around since i think the 30s or something like that and pretty much this exact form or really close to it so uh you know there's definitely a lot of information out there if you don't know what it is I, i'll try to explain it but it's essentially a, like a giant drill press that you can carve metal with I'm sure most of you guys know that. So anyways, um, I got some poly bushings for the traction bars that I was saying that I wanted to build for the truck. So got those in finally. Oh, one thing uh, 
to kind of explain some of the, you know, I was, some of the, some of the projects got delayed out here for a really long time because that mill was actually like three months in the works. So I was told about it, the guy was going to sell it, and uh, I pretty much bought it, and I didn't get it for another three months. So there was a lot that I couldn't really do in that general area because I didn't have a time frame as to when the mill would show up. It could have been like tomorrow at any point in time. So like the bike, the truck, some of the other vehicles, the Jeep, I always had to kind of leave some room somewhere for this in case I just got that call and was like, hey, you need to come and get this thing because the guy was going to be moving and uh, you know, so I needed to be ready. So anyway, that's kind of why some things drug on a lot longer than they should have. But uh, yeah, I didn't, I wasn't sure if it was even going to go through because it was taking so long. So I didn't want to say anything, but other than that, a couple of little tiny things that I ended up making some progress on is I got the U-joints. Was that even in frame? I don't know. The U-joints here, excuse me, for these Jeep axles. So I believe that these are Dana 30s. They're for the Cherokee. These came with the truck. So that is the deal with those. They're not in the greatest of shape, but uh, I noticed that whenever I was trying to take these things kind of apart, sort of, um, the U-joints go right in there. I don't know if you can even see it. You can't because it's on the ground. But those things are so whacked out that there's no possible way that I could even cheat because the other, the drive shafts and stuff, I was able to cheat and just use the old kind of gummy U-joints to save a buck. But on these, they're actually wallowed out so much they move a ton. So... I couldn't leave those. So I got those U-joints for it, and uh, we're going to put those in. Try to clean them up the best that we can. I don't actually even know if they are the right gear ratio. I don't know what they came out of. I don't know anything about them other than their high pinion Dana 30s for a Jeep. Uh, well, I'm guessing they're for a Jeep since I got them with the Jeep, and uh, everything else fit the Jeep. So, yeah, they're I'm pretty sure a Jeep. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't know if they're what ratio they are, if they're the same ratio. If they're not, well, that's a problem, so I'll have to find gears for it. But I'm pretty sure that they are. They look equally as crusty, really, so they're probably off of the same Jeep, I would guess. But once, uh, once I get a little bit more time, we'll pull those things out, those U-joints. Wait. Can you see that? I think... Oh, no. I thought that was one of the U-joint ends there, but it looks like it's part of the... looks like it's one of the Hall Effect sensors for the uh, speed control or ABS. I think it's the ABS sensor up there. I don't know on those what they're like. Also, I got this little two-stage compressor. So I got that with the mill for free. It's really cool. And uh, I got the little tank for it. I had some uh, AC motors laying around. This one is from a treadmill and uh, has like this, like, I forgot what type of clutch these are called, but it's like a snowmobile and it, like expands out uh, with RPM. You know, it just kind of like centrifugally spreads out and then drops the, you know, changes the, basically the ratio of the belt. Um, but yeah, anyway, there's usually another one on the other side and they, they swap back and forth like a CVT transmission, but this one I'm going to lock out because it, I have a belt. This fits the belt. I don't have another pulley, but I'll just lock this one out. It's, we used to be adjusted with like a cable that would pull this apart and change the treadmill speeds, but it's more than enough power for that little, um, for that little compressor spins it at, a, you know, right about the right speed. So it's not too fast it's not too slow it's just about perfect so I'll kind of mocking it up make sure that it works okay and then I'll build like a cradle for the top of this for it to sit on and then just clamp it down then I don't have to weld to the tank or anything so there's that um, this 
360 is still kind of, you know, I just talked to my buddy the other day. He's been swamp busy. Haven't had a chance to, to go over there and do much on it, but we just have to basically lay the crank, the cams in. And uh, once I get a little bit more footage of that, I'll stitch that video together so you can kind of see what we did. But it's crank time, pistons time. Everything is ready to go on that. Um, I did pick up a return style fuel pressure regulator for the truck. So, you know, quick fuel pressure regulator and a, and a gauge for it. So I'll be able to run a return style fuel pressure regulator in there so I get the, the most accurate um, fuel pressure in this truck and it cycles the fuel back into the tank rather than a deadhead system which would push, push the fuel up to the carb and it would just wait there. The fuel would be stuck in the line waiting for the carb to need it and it would heat up up there in the engine bay and then you know create a possibility of vapor lock and different stuff. So the return style, I don't know, you guys probably know this, but return style system, it comes up and it just returns back to the tank and keeps your fuel nice and cool as it makes its little trip and reduces uh, tons and tons of potential problems. So that's what I got. And uh, yeah, so that is what's happening out here. It's freezing cold. It's probably really late now. I still have to put the mister together for the, you can't even see anything. I don't even know what, how to use this phone camera because you can't see anything on it, but lots of stuff to do. Not a ton of time to do it, but uh, I'll take you along for the rides as they come. But I just wanted to say thanks a lot. Sorry that the live stream kind of became a non-live stream, but it was still pretty fun, right? So I had a good time talking to you about the stuff in the shop and hopefully you're excited about it and you think it's cool because I sure as heck think it's cool and I'm ultra excited to learn how to use the mill a little bit more and learn the more advanced techniques with it. So thanks for watching the half ass Garage and I hope that you have an awesome night, awesome day, whatever it is for you and I'll catch you next time. See ya.